Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY, that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in New Hampshire, Oregon, and Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash football. All right, everybody. Welcome again to Bear Bets, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Score big with DraftKings Sportsbook, the best place to bet touchdowns. Download the DK Sportsbook app. Use the code Bear Bets. That's Bear Bets for new customers to get two hundred dollars in bonus bets. Back once again. I'm the Bear, Chris Felica, joined by Jeff Schwartz. Uh, each and every week, follow us, on Bear Bets, and wherever you get your podcast and our YouTube channel as well. You mentioned it last week and that it felt like we're really getting that separation and definition of yes. the good and poop town. And it, poop it, town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm stealing that's that. That's what I did earlier that, today. That's a, that's, a, that's a Scott Van Pelt term. So uh, credit, <laughs> okay. credit trademark, trademark Scott Van Pelt. That's one of the – actually, last week I listened to their pod uh, on the flight out to – we had been in Indiana and I was in tears because they did like the whole like like delineation of poop town. Like are, are you like poop town adjacent? Like it was it was hysterical. So I can't are the wait. Niners in poop town adjacent or the Niners in oh, poop well, town? Well, I will find out later this afternoon after I when I want to get on the plane to to Columbus yeah. and, and, and go through my podcast uh hi- hierarchy there. So we will uh we will find out. It'll be interesting. What about the Niners? So wow. Season win total eight and a yeah. half, not yeah. a lock at all to win the division. Like Cowboys, Niners, this, and Cowboys yeah. and Niners both, they both could wind up missing the playoffs. The the last future wager I made before the season started was Niners under 11 and a half wins. I'm glad I did, yeah. that. I, I'm glad I did that. I've made some yeah. since then. Um, by the way, this week I took Browns over three and a half wins. I thought that was pretty low. Do we want to play they're, give them a win dog with the Browns? They're, they're one in six. I get that. But Deshaun Watson, we'll talk about the Browns later. Uh, a little preview there for one of my wagers. Uh, they're not as bad without uh, without Deshaun Watson. Nonetheless, the 49ers bear. Um, we sort of always talked about what Brock Purdy would look like if all his weapons were not around him, right? And we're sort of seeing that, unfortunately, yeah. with injuries, yeah. right? Ayuk got hurt out for the season. McCaffrey's coming back at some point. Um Debo's sick, I believe, right? Pneumonia, yeah. they said. Um, and then the offensive line has had their moments. But but I think also, too, the Chiefs sort of just have the Niners number right now. And I'm not sure that that will translate over to playing the Cowboys or the rest of the season. But the thing about the Shanahan offense is that when it gets behind schedule, the pass game is not as robust as we might imagine it to be. Mm-hmm. When you're running the ball and you're sort of taking it to the defense, the pass game is fantastic. And I think right now, Bear, they're they're limited because they're not doing as well in those early downs, and they don't have the wide receivers now to sort of win third and long situations. Right. And it's hurting the entire flow of the offense. And they got to figure out a way to sort of get through this. Everyone has injuries, right? They just played a team in Kansas City that their leading receiver in that game was Noah Gray. Right, their backup tight end. <laughs> right, so like you have to find a way to win in the NFL when you don't have your best. And I will give the Niners grace because I like their coaching staff; they'll figure it out. And against the Cowboys defense this week, maybe they can sort of find a better path forward. But as far as winning the NFC West, oh man, I play sort of like who do I trust? Game right. I, I, the Rams to me are I like Stafford I'm, and McVay. Yeah. Don't don't no, trust them. There. The Cardinals absolutely not. Seattle. What is Seattle, right? They lost three in a row. They beat a Falcons team on the road. Are they good enough to, to throw in the Niners essentially in this division? I think if things break right, absolutely they can. But to me, it's more about the Niners not being good than the Seahawks sort of being better than them, if that makes sense. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm looking at the Seahawks schedule right now, by the way. Uh, it got the, the return trip to San Francisco in a couple of weeks. But 
you got the Jets, which is probably a winnable game, but you got the Packers as well. You got the Vikings. So that's not like their schedule is yeah. super, super easy uh, as well. By the way, I was looking at your Browns. Like we said, the Browns win total is three and a half for you. Uh, over three and a half. Yeah. So you need, th- you basically need them to beat the Chargers. Yeah. To beat the Saints, which are games coming up, and then beat the Dolphins. Or are you telling me that they're not? Are, yeah, are they you, are, you know what? I might actually get on this with you are, now. you. are you telling me that they're not good enough with a different quarterback? Yeah, they they are to win to win. They're the, wh- Charger, Charger, we, we Saints, the, two with the Steelers. Yes, Broncos, Dolphins. We we could do my Browns sure. take now, and then I'll reiterate at the end of the podcast. Yeah, no, I, Jameis Winston was the worst quarterback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I, like no, I, I, Deshaun Watson was the worst. I'm sorry, Deshaun, who did I say? You said Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston. Deshaun Watson was the worst quarterback in the NFL. Like worse than both Raiders quarterbacks. Like wor- the worst quarterback in the NFL. Let, let, let's worst save it. I, I don't. I don't want you to empty the barrel right okay. now. Let, 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 like let, they're going to win let, more let, than three and a half games. They're going to win four games. Three down. Three of the last. What ten? Um, with but save it, save it, save it, save it, save okay. it, save it. So, I would. I, I, I'm still going to trust the Niners. I, I know I'm probably going to have a lot of uh, kindling for the uh, the fire pit with the, with those tickets. But NFC North is is the best division in in, in football. Yeah, I yes. would like the the Lions have to be the NFC favorite right now. Oh, by far, Super Bowl like. Even if the Niners like suddenly get healthy, like the way the Lions are playing yeah. right now, like not not only like division, but I, I thought that was that was as good of a win as you can have not playing your best football last weekend. Mm-hmm. They were down ten nothing, yeah, and storm roll, and that was probably because of that of that, that fake punt that was just <laughs> outrageous, right? Um, and they won anyways, and they won again with other best defensive player on the field. And they're figuring out sort of defense. I, I think I, I picked the Lions to win the NFC anyways. Bear, I like where I stand right now you, with you them. Should. Um, so I would take them, you know, you know, not the best number now, but you still get plus money to, for them to win the division. Packers? Packers, I think the Packers would be, I think. Are I the think, Packers I, I the second best, best about, team in the NFC? Second best, I don't know, but I was about to say, I think that in by the end of the season, they'll have a better record than the Minnesota Vikings. I think so too. Like the the the, the Packers, I think, are a very dangerous sleeperish type team because I think everyone's kind of forgetting about them a little bit because the Vikings were off to a great start and the Lions like if you if you're out if you're if you're out on the yeah. if you're out on the east and I'm out on the east because I don't think the Eagles are any good no. and I don't think the Cowboys are any good the Giants are awful and, and Washington maybe they, they make the yeah. playoffs and they they lose to to a better team but I think I, I think you could probably play the Packers and the and the Lions yep. to win the NFC, and I think you probably have the winner. The Packers beat the Texans last weekend minus three in turnovers. Yeah. So hard to do. Yep. How the Texans under two hundred yards. The Packers defense is roaring right now. Jordan Love is making the plays necessary. I, yeah, the Packers I think are really good. Yeah, no. so I, I, and I, the East, the NFC East is. Oh. I don't even. I don't even want to watch those teams play. No, I, I, zero zero desire. Uh, it probably comes down to the Daniels injury. Even though I don't think the Eagles are any good, they're probably still the bet here if you had to make a bet. Yeah, I have Eagles to win the division in, in a future to start the season. So um, I might add Washington and just call it a day and just say those two are the yeah, division just winners. Get, get off. Yeah. So I, I mean, I'll make money either way. It's a plus money wager, right? If I take Washington, they both end up doing that. Because um, Dallas is dead in the water, I think. Washington has, I'll just say this about Washington because Cliff Kingsbury's offensive coordinator. We have seen throughout his career, Bear, like after the midway point of the season, his offense has collapsed. So mm-hmm. I'm worried about that okay. with Washington, but that doesn't mean I'm, I'm not going to wager on them because I think that it's a good bet to make now because I think it's only those two teams winning this division. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Then uh, the the NFC South, like again, this is a division I want no part of being involved in. It still fe- it still feels a little bit like the. The Falcons are getting a little too much respect, though. I mean, the, the Falcons stink. It, this is only the, the 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 Bucks are better, but the injuries at wide receiver are a problem now, right? Because Mike Evans is at least not is not coming back to the uh, after the bye, uh, which is another which is basically a month, and and gone with our season. Can can I give you a, a a time to bet the Bucks? So please do the next three games for Tampa Bay before their bye: Falcons, Chiefs, Niners. Okay, then it's a bye. And they end with these seven games. Giants, Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Cowboys, Panthers, Saints. 
I think you bet the Bucks to win the division after that Niners game in in their bye. Because there's a chance that you know, they they let's say they go one and two the next three games. Th- there's a realistic chance they go six and one the last seven games. Mm-hmm. Giants, pa- this is the last seven games. Giants, Panthers, Raiders, Chargers, Cowboys, Panthers, Saints. They're gonna be a favorite in six of those because they're at Dallas. Maybe they're not a favorite against Dallas. So I feel like if you wait a month, basically, to bet on the Bucks to win the South, you get a better number if they go one and two the next three games. Yeah, I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at the uh, Falcons schedule the last couple of weeks as well, and they kind of have the same thing at Denver. Yeah, a lot of division stuff. At Denver, yeah. home Cowboys, uh, at Vikings. So, but who do you, but who do you trust in the last month of the season? Do you trust Tampa Bay with Mike Evans back or the Falcons? I trust Tampa Bay. I trust Tampa Bay with Mike Evans. Back. Yeah. If, if, yeah, if indeed he is back for yeah. the, at that point. They rushed him back last. Week. I was surprised he played. They, uh, yeah, I, 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 I was too. It, it kind of sucked to see him, yeah. see him go down and, and get hurt like that. So, just a couple of quick division thoughts, and got plenty more thoughts here from myself, Jeff, Will, John Murray, Gambling Group Chat. Kick a bunch of stuff around. Enjoy. Back again with the NFL Gambling Group Chat. Myself and Jeff joined by John Murray from the Superbook and Will Hill, as always. Interesting game tonight. The Vikings coming off of their first loss of the season in a game that they very easily could have won a questionable fourth down decision. Should they have gone forward or not? And then the, uh, the, the field goal by the Lions to knock them off in a great game. Uh, tonight on the road at SoFi, where there's really no home field advantage. Vikings two and a half or three uh, and 48 over the Rams in, in this one. This feels like a spot, John, where, where I think you're probably going to get a lot of people coming in on the uh, on the home dog. Yeah, we are. I, I can tell you guys that all the bigger bets we've seen on this game are on the Rams. Rams are plus three. All the big tickets are there. Now, we talk about this on the show. The ticket counts. People love to see the ticket count numbers and draw their conclusions from those. No comment on whether whether I think that's a good strategy or not, but I can tell you that the tickets are all on Minnesota. It's like almost five to one on the Vikings last time I looked at it, but right now we need the Vikings just because all the big bets are on the Rams. Now, as we move closer to game time and the parlays for the week are all going to start with Minnesota. Really? My guess is we'll need, we'll, yeah, they'll, they'll start, they'll start their money line parlays with the Vikings because the Vikings are her favorite. So I think we'll probably be rooting for the Rams when we kick off tonight. No home field advantage. You're being too nice, Bear. You know, it's Minnesota, <laughs> man. It's gonna, it'll be Vikings. There'll be more Vikings fans there than Rams fans, is my so, guess. So Will's, he, Will's headed out to SoFi tonight, uh, the noted Vikings fan, Will Hill. You, you, oh, you're, nice. you're going LAX to take the little ride over to Inglewood? I mean, this would have been a good week to do it. Go watch the Vikings and uh, stick around. Maybe go watch the Yankees and the Dodgers. This is a hell of a week to be in L.A. Uh, I think this is a really bad spot for the Vikings. Uh, they, they go from being basically underdogs all year. All right, the Jets and Lions games are basically you know, toss-up games. Now they're laying three on the road. It's kind of you go from being the uh, the hunter to being the hunted, and they put their heart and soul into that Lions game. Had a bye, had time to prepare. We're up ten nothing. Then they, you know, fell behind double digits. They came back, had the ball with a one point lead. Just needed a first down or so to close it out. Couldn't do it. Now a quick turnaround, long flight to L.A. Uh, I think this is a, just a, a really tough spot for Minnesota. I like the Rams here. I think this is a, uh, you know, I, the, most of the three and a halfs are, are expensive. It's mostly three, but I could definitely see the Rams winning this game. It'd be Rams or nothing for me. Will, you forgot taking a ride from Dodger Stadium to the Coliseum to watch Rutgers and, and USC after the Dodger <laughs> yes. game. So you can have a full a full weekend, a full Friday night of of sports there uh, to watch Sunge. I saw a tweet from someone saying like that this is a, a great day for the New York LA rivalry, like 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 <laughs> Rutgers yes. USC. Noted it's, it's New York team. <laughs> noted, Sunge. noted rivalry there. Um I agree with Will on on the tough spot for the Vikings, but I just think the Rams are not any good. And and I get you don't wager sometimes on whether a team is good or not. You wager on a number. But the Rams, to me, just I, – I, what do they do in this game to keep this game close? I mean, I, I guess you would say emotional letdown for Minnesota is the reason why, uh, for the reasons that, that Will mentioned. But Minnesota is just much better. Uh, one way that I thought about playing this game, and I, I haven't done it yet, guys, is Cooper Cup is back tonight, right, Bear? I think he's back tonight. Um 
under receptions for Cup, I, I know they're going to try to feed him the ball, but the Vikings sort of know that. The Vikings defense is good. And I think there's a way to sort of play this and say Cooper Cup back off an injury, not really in rhythm with Stafford, a short practice week, and everyone's going to bet us over this game, right? They're going to, they're going to target him. They're going to go for him. Um, why don't we just take the under in Cooper Cup, knowing the Vikings know he's back? And again, he hasn't played a lot of football in, in a long time, and it's hard to get in rhythm on a short week. So, uh, I think Cooper Cup under, I think six and a half receptions uh, would, would be the way I'd look. I, I was like looking at something similar to that as well, wondering and maybe if there was like a Matthew Stafford under 237 and a half, I think was a number like passing prop, something like that, just, just because you are going against a good defense and maybe we see a little bit more of Kyron Williams and maybe you, with, with the Vikings offense. So yeah, I, the, the the number itself, I don't necessarily want to get involved in there, even though I I do agree with Will and where, where, where John's standing, it, it would be Rams or pass if I had to actually bet this game right now. Uh, the game, here, here, here's the team that knocked me out of last man standing last week, John. The 49ers uh, laid, 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 laid the one and a half with last man standing pool with 70-something people left from however many thousand. And I am now amongst the however many thousand no longer in last man standing as a result of the Niners getting absolutely annihilated at home by the Chiefs. Mm. I'm sure Jeff will remind me about that at some point during, Never. The, during, during the show. Here, though, they're hosting a bad team. I think Dallas stinks. Uh, like the, 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 I think people now are so low on the 49ers. They like opened at six and a half. We're down to four and 46 and a half. I don't think Dallas is any good. I actually would very strongly consider playing San Francisco here. If we get some positive news about Debo Samuel, maybe being able to play this, I don't know if he's going to, or if we're going to, but at some point I would think the 49ers would put together a a complete game against a Dallas team that can't stop a cold. I got knocked out of last man standing such a long time ago. I forgot that contest was still going on. So I, I, I put that one out of my memory. I forgot that was a thing last. I got knocked out of that weeks ago. I like, I like the Niners last week. Like you, like you did bear. I really thought they were going to show up against Kansas city. Kansas city is so good defensively this season. Yep. They just bottle everybody up. They, they really were impressive. I will tell you this. This is one of the, the one game this week where I've seen action. That I really respect at the Westgate and it's on Dallas. Dallas mm. plus four and a half against San Francisco. The 49ers, I, I'm, I keep waiting for them to flip this switch and become the 49ers, and they just haven't been able to do it, guys. You know, they not that there's anything embarrassing about losing to the Chiefs. That's fine. Everybody loses to the Chiefs, but they just can. They haven't been able to turn that corner. They got a lot of guys hurt on offense. They don't look like the team from a year ago. No, in their season yeah, win total just, now is actually down to down to eight and a half, which is a, amazing uh, to think that. Uh, you're potentially projecting this team to finish eight and nine or nine and eight. And you you look at the schedule the rest of the way, uh, you got a road game against Tampa, which might be a a little bit easier now with the Bucks injuries, home Seattle at green Bay at Buffalo. You got the lions. Like it's, it's going to be interesting to see if they can get to nine. Well, yeah, every week I feel like, you know, it went from starting at 12 and a half to, wow, it's down to 10 and a half. It's down to nine and a half. Now it's down to eight and a half. It's just starting to feel like the season from hell with all the injuries. Uh, they and remember, they've played a lot of football the last few years. When you go to the Super Bowl, when you go to the NFC title game, that's just a lot of uh, a lot of body blows. And they're just, they're so banged up. Now, maybe McCaffrey's actually going to come back. They haven't exactly been, you know, honest with his whole uh, injury situation, but that no. would, uh, you know, be a, a big addition if they can get him back in a couple weeks. Um, he's not going to be back for this game. I actually like Dallas, and I think it, it from an old school handicapping, uh, you know, perspective, Dallas is the is the side just because they got embarrassed the last time we saw them against Detroit. You can't play worse. You know, Jerry Jones is getting in fights with people on the radio. Uh, everyone's questioning McCarthy, and they've had a buy to sort of chew on that and stew on that bad performance. Mm-hmm. And now they get a banged up 49ers team. Remember, San Francisco absolutely buried this team on uh, Sunday Night Football right around this time last year, beat them by a good 20, 30 points. So uh, to me, it'd be Dallas or nothing. And keep this in mind, too. The thing we don't talk a lot about, kickers. Dallas has got about about as good as anybody in the league in terms of Aubrey. Now he's got jury duty, which is a strange situation, (laughs) but he should be good to go, I think, uh, on Sunday. The Niners are running out this uh, Anders Carlson, who was on Green Bay last year, missed an extra point last week. Uh, He is very shaky. So, you know, sometimes how often do these games come down to a missed field goal, a missed extra point, something like that, where they come back to bite you? I keep that in mind, too. But it'd be Dallas or nothing for me. 
the Dallas Cowboys injury report says Brandon Aubrey, kicker, NIR, other uh, jury duty. So it's I've never seen that in an injury report before, but that's where we are with uh, with him. And I guess there's no court on Sunday, so he can show up if he's still in the jury. Uh, look, uh, this game is tough for me because I think you can make a case that both teams are sort of dead right now. Uh, Will makes the, the great point, I feel, like the Cowboys have heard now for two weeks about their game against the Lions and um, how poorly they played. And Jerry Jones is getting on the radio trying to fire a radio host, and it feels very contentious there. But you look at their defense, and it hasn't played well. No Demarcus Lawrence. Micah Parsons hopeful to play. If you're out those two guys, mm -hmm. how do you rush the passer? We saw last weekend and what Kansas City does so well against the Niners is they target pressuring Purdy in situations that – the Niners can't really block, and then Perry doesn't have guys to throw to, especially when guys are hurt. Cowboys can't do that, right? It's not what they are. The, the Niners, I think, can just run the ball on Dallas. And on the flip side, Dallas offensively right now, not very good, can't run the football. But so if you shut down CeeDee Lamb, what other options do they have to pass the football? Um, so I, I think it's tough to take either team in the situation. I would lean Niners here, but uh, probably stay away from this game in general. Are we, are we to the point where... If you if the 49ers aren't going to win this division, who's going to though? Seattle. I guess. Not Arizona. I don't think Arizona's very good. Seattle, I guess. If, you, if you're the Rams and you win on Thursday night, you talk yourself into, hey, we're three and four. Nobody's pulled away. Why not us? I mean, I and you've got to win over to the 49ers already. It's just so wide open. It, it really is. That, that's the thing. Like, I like you can still get the Niners at, at a very cheap price to make the playoff. And we, you, we I think. Uh, you, you'd say, I think you you said it a couple of weeks ago. Well, like, is this like the the the, the smartest best ever or bet ever, or like the the biggest sucker bet ever when you when like the Niners were like minus one seventy five or so uh, to to make the playoff? But uh, yeah, I, I think I think that's going to be a little bit of a sweat now, unfortunately, um, with, with with the Niners giving away a couple of games that they easily should have won and uh, could have won, should have won, definitely should have won against the uh, the Cardinals and the uh, and and the Rams. So uh, we'll we'll move to. The Washington football team, John Murray, the Commanders, Sands, Jaden Daniels, probably this weekend, taking on Caleb Williams and the number one pick in the draft. Uh, the Bills, Commanders opened up as a favorite. Now, I, I think the the way the action has come in and the way the line has moved, uh, we're probably expecting that that Daniels will not play. But last week, the the offense didn't look too shabby with Mariota under the helm. Like, uh, can, can you uh, can you still make a case here to play Washington plus the points against the Bears? Oh, I think you can. I mean, you know, Washington Washington's looked pretty good just overall. It hasn't been just Jaden Daniels. They, but Washington, ever, all the attention has been paid to Jaden Daniels, and I understand why. But the coaching staff there has done an excellent job. Quinn on defense, Kingsbury on offense. They got rid of some of the really bad draft picks that Ron Rivera invested in while he was the head coach there. And they've, they've really turned over that roster and the whole team's playing. Well, obviously you can tell by the line move that the books don't expect Jaden Daniels to play on Sunday. That's why the number has moved to Chicago minus two and a half, but look, the bears are not exactly world beaters guys. I mean, I think Washington can win this game, even with a backup QB. Yeah, you're getting the full three now. There's some juice, but full three minus minus one eighteen at DraftKings for Washington to be Washington or nothing. John, I'm curious what, if Daniels was was healthy and playing, which I, I don't think he's playing this week, like what is Daniels yeah. worth? Would, would this be commanders by a couple points? Are we saying Daniels is yeah. already worth a good five, six points? So our look ahead line was was Washington two and a half. That's before last week's games, obviously before Daniels got hurt. But I should tell you that we had a player that we really respect bet Chicago plus two and a half on that look ahead number. And we had moved it to Washington minus one even before the games on Sunday played. So we're, we're played, I should say. So that should give you a good an idea of at least what we think he's worth. We think he's worth maybe three to three and a half points. You're going through zero. Remember when you're, when you're talking about going from one to, to minus three, the other way. So I'd call it three to three and a half points. The value of a quarterback is largely based on what we think of his backup quarterback. And you've seen some teams where the starter gets hurt. Like let's look, like look at Indianapolis doesn't even really matter which one of those two guys play probably better off and then Flacco. some teams have right Flacco is probably better yeah I, I don't disagree with that and, but and then and sometimes we're wrong you know I'll be honest guys I didn't really think that Tua being out was going to be this significant for Miami I didn't realize it would like sink their entire season 
to not have Tua play? It's definitely wrong about that. So a lot of it's based on the, the quality of your backup QB. I think Mariota at least can be competent in short in a short stint. He can't be your starting quarterback for a whole season. Can he go in there and win a game for you? I think maybe yes. I, I like the commanders getting the points here. The, the Bears guys have, have four wins, right? They're four and two. They're off a of bye. They beat the Titans, the Rams, the Panthers, and Jacksonville. They, they played nobody. They lost the Texans during the season. They lost the Colts. The commanders might be the best team they've played all season. And you mentioned it. Mariota is good in this situation, right? Where Nala is asked of him. He's not a franchise savior. He just goes and plays quarterback in a quarterback-friendly offense. Kingsbury's doing a great job right now of just getting the most out of the out of the pieces they have. And defensively, we've talked about their 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 defense as a liability, and it certainly has been in some games, but it's been better lately, right? It was better against Baltimore, yeah. even though the Baltimore scored thirty points, but they did force a turnover early in that draw, early in that game to help them. They played against a, a Panthers team that looked. Panthers are very bad. I get that, but they've scored some points this season. Nope, not not like the defense looks like it's getting better, which makes sense under Dan Quinn, a defensive coach, takes some time to figure things out. Um, I would gladly take Washington plus three in this spot. I just don't like the Bears. I don't think they're very good. Uh, they're they just haven't played anyone, and the Commanders are more seasoned. They play better opponents, and they're playing good football right now. I'd probably take the Commanders as well, you, even though John did mention the respected player uh, coming in on the Bears on that look ahead, but. It feels like maybe a little bit of a little bit of an overreaction, and, and we'll see if the value of uh, Jaden Daniels is indeed as much as we potentially think uh, it could be. Uh, the, here, the next, the Enigma Bowl is what I'm going to call this one: Eagles at Bengals, two teams that I think a lot of people feel are better maybe than they actually are. Like the Eagles, yeah, they beat the Giants last week. Fine, it is what it is. The Bengals, kind of another uninspiring win against the Browns where they where they had what what three touchdowns or what, one non-offensive touchdown in that game just another ugly win and here I am an idiot who I actually took the Bengals I think a plus a plus 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 115 to wind up making the playoffs just because I think if you look at the AFC playoff race uh, it is uh wide open there for the uh, la the last couple of wild card spots or so but I, I don't think I really want to get involved. Maybe, maybe an over in this game because that Bengals defense, I still think, uh, is pretty bad. And I think the Eagles with some of their healthier wide receivers would be the way to go. So I got no interest really on the side either way, John. But I, I think over 48 would be the uh, the, the, the way I would uh, attack this game if you, you were looking for a little action on early uh, Sunday morning. Is that is that official? If you bet the Bengals to make the playoffs in season, you're an idiot. <laughs> are, we, are we going with that? Because that, yeah, and yes, that you, would, you, you, I would include myself do. in that group. Because I have, I, I made in-season future bets on the Bengals to make the playoffs and to win the AFC. I can't quit this team, Bear. I, I just, I believe too much in their offense. I believe in Burrow. I don't really like the coach, but I, I do believe in the Bengals. Although I think clearly right now, Baltimore and Kansas City have distanced themselves from mm -hmm. probably the whole NFL. To be honest with you, but we'll, we'll see. This game. I don't know what to do with the Eagles because I don't like the Eagles coach at all. And I'm being as nice as I can be right there. <laughs> th this has been all Philadelphia, all Philadelphia at the Westgate. Well, to do with that information, what you want to do with it. We can't write about on the Bengals. We haven't moved the number. It's just Eagles, Eagles, Eagles. We're all talking on Thursday morning. You guys know 80, 80, 90, 95% of the bets are still to come, but so far it's been all Philadelphia. Yeah, I actually have an interesting position on Cincy because I bet them before the season got a nice number, plus 170 to win the division. Then they started one and three or whatever, and I bet them to miss the playoffs. So I'm setting myself up for a, a nice little middle here where they make the playoffs and I lose everything. But uh, <laughs> to me, it'd be Cincy or nothing. Burrow seems to rise to the occasion in these big games. I mean, you think about it, their two most impressive performances are probably the losses where they lost to Kansas City, probably should have won. Lost to Baltimore, definitely should have won up by 10 late in that game. So uh, they they rise to the the competition. I think Burrow is good in these spots. They're getting healthier defensively. Uh, I, I'm not a Sirianni fan either. Who knows, you know, what that situation is like in Philly. Uh, I'll go with Cincy here, Bear. I think I would lean Cincinnati here. Um, the Eagles beat the Giants. I get that. The Giants aren't very good, but the Eagles sort of just did it one way, right? The, the Saquon Barkley and, and the Bengals defense has gotten better since they got a little healthier. I just, 
when you watch Eagles play offensively, guys, it's just kind of gross, right? Like it's it looks sort of dysfunctional and not in rhythm, not with a purpose. Um, you know, Jalen Hurts looks uncomfortable in the pocket. I know they had some offensive line injuries, which certainly don't help any of that. But he, the offense doesn't look whole. Yeah, Saquon Barkley is a great football player, and he did a great job against the Giants. But I don't think you're going to have that 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 same success running back that game plan. They hit AJ Brown on a nice fourth down pass. Like, I mean, they're doing some good things, guys. But I I trust the Bengals offense. Like they, they, the Bengals offense is the best part of this game. I think we all agree on that, right? Like they're, they're they're the best thing in this game. They're at home. Uh, I would lean toward Bengals here. I don't think I'll have a play in this game. Uh, in in you know come come Sunday. Oh, but I, I think we're all kind of seeing it the same way here uh, with this one. Uh, so we're going to move on now. Uh, Super Six game of the week, been sponsored by DraftKings. We'll have the uh, the column coming out, and uh, we're going to talk about America's game of the week: the Bills and the Seahawks. Uh, Bills are a three point favorite in Seattle. Who I don't know if we are, know if D, uh, DK Metcalf is going to play. It's a great, they said grade one MCL, which is I think just mostly week to week. So he, if he feels good Sunday, he'll play. If he doesn't, he won't play. So uh, the, the question going to be: What will the outcome of the game be? Bills by three or more, or the the Seahawks to uh, to get the cover? I I feel like a lot of people are going to play the Seahawks here coming off the win in Atlanta, Buffalo still with some defensive problems uh, as well, but the bills offense looks really, really good. And obviously Seattle has been giving up points left and right to pretty much every team that they play. I would, I would look at a, a higher scoring game potentially in this one, uh, for the, for the for the Niners bets that we have, I would hope Buffalo would win. But again, it, it seems they get so many of these uh, toss up field goalish type numbers this year. I, I I just don't know what to do with this one. Even though I think the home dog will probably be pretty attractive here. I like the under here. Actually, I think you know you get two good defensive coaches, and just looking at the forecast for Seattle, some rain, some <clears> wind. <throat> it's going to be. We're getting to the point of the year where some of these games weather's an issue. Uh, again, McDonald and McDermott, uh, both, you know, especially McDermott, defensive, conservative. Uh, if no Metcalf, that hurts the explosive plays. To me, I could see, you know, uh, I don't know, 23 20 type of game. So I lean towards the under. And you mentioned the home dogs. I'm sure John could speak to this. When is the last time a, a home dog covered? It has been road chalk here for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. All of these parlays, these money line mm-hmm. parlay, money line, uh, you know, favorites, they all just seem to hit every week after it was all dogs cashing the first, you know, six weeks or so. It's been all, uh, it, it's been all chalk the last couple of weeks, especially these road favorites. I, I can tell you guys, Will, that when you, on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, I go upstairs to these meetings to explain what happened. <laughs> and I tell everybody that all the road favorites won. They all look at me like, I don't care what you're saying. Come in with better results than that. <laughs> that excuse doesn't fly too well for us. I, I will say on this game, Buffalo minus three at Seattle, no one seems to know what to do with this game. Guys. We don't really have much action on either side. It's surprising to me because on paper, this looks like one of the more interesting matchups of the week. You know, this is a week with all these huge favorites and presumably a lot of very one-sided games. This looks like a pretty competitive game in the afternoon, and there's just not a whole lot there. I'm sure we'll end up needing Seattle when the game starts because, you know, the action's more concentrated in the afternoon. There's fewer games, so there's going to be more money on Buffalo than there are some of the favorites in the morning. We'll need the Seahawks. It'd be nice to think that a, a, a road or a home underdog could win a football game. Well, I mean, in theory, that could happen at some point this season, right? So, I, I will be rooting for Seattle. John, see, make my life easier next week. You know, <laughs> we, we are we are all about making your life easier. That, that that's the goal of us uh, of us here to make your life is is easy and the the best quality of living that you can. So, how far how far below you, you mentioned the Chiefs and the Ravens have kind of separated themselves, like. Do you think the Bills are a player in the AFC, or, or do you, th- you think we're just steamrolling towards the inevitable Chiefs-Ravens AFC championship game? Look, I don't know if it's inevitable. Buffalo's going to win the division, so they're going to get a home playoff game. And I I, I know, I, I think Josh Allen's the best football player in the world. I mean, I think the guy is so unbelievably talented. But so do I think he could steal a game against Baltimore or Kansas City? I do think that. I think Baltimore and Kansas City are both way more complete teams than Buffalo. I I would take Buffalo or Baltimore and Kansas City's coaching staff over Buffalo's coaching staff 
10 days out of 10. I, I don't even think it's close, but could Allen steal the game for the Bills? I, I think he could. I think he's that good. But, you know, you look at Mahomes' numbers, and our, our boy Sammy P has been railing against Mahomes being the MVP favorite, and I understand where he's coming from, but every single time Mahomes needs to make a play, he does. Always. He always comes through. So it's just hard. It's hard to pick against anybody, but it's hard to pick anybody but Kansas City Bear. Dan, I agree. I agree with Sammy. By the way, I can't believe Mahomes is out of the MVP favorite right now. Every well, time Lamar he needs to play, there. he gets. Yeah. So, I mean, it's I, just it's it's incredible. He does it every time. You cannot stop the guy when he needs it the most. He makes the play. I I said this the other day after the 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 Chiefs game, and I think it sums them up well. Like when their best is needed, they play their best. Right. Like in those moments yeah. where. It's like we got to close out a game, which they did against San Francisco. We it's third and eight. We got to make a throw. There just happens. They they make the plays. Other teams sort of fail in those moments, right? We've seen all, year after year, and the Chiefs just make those plays when it matters the most. They, no, they might not make the plays this weekend to cover ten. We'll 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 find out. But in, in this game, um, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't look at last week's Seattle game as any indication of what the team is going to be. I think we we're all on board with the Falcons sort of not being as good as their record was. Um, and Seattle's offense inside, Geno Smith throughout his career has played really well. As Will mentioned, they're they're gonna they're back home. The weather's a little bit different. No DK, Buffalo off a, you know, a a big, big win with Amari Cooper, not some sort of big emotional win, but Amari Cooper <clears> back in there, had a touchdown, looked really good in this offense. I, I have nothing for this game. I, I don't I probably won't bet it. There'll be nothing I play. So, so we're talking about the big the big fo- the sports weekend out in LA, or you even want to talk about big football weekend in Vegas, UNLV, uh, Boise on Friday night, and then on Sunday you got the the MVP uh, favorite Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes against the uh, the coach of the year favorite, right, Antonio Pierce, uh, John? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's coach of the year favorite in my book for that field goal he kicked on on Sunday <laughs> afternoon against the Rams. I mean. We uh, we didn't we didn't do too well in some of the games on this past Sunday, but I can tell you guys that the Raiders covering with a field goal down by eight, which I don't really understand. Two forty two forty seven ago. I wasn't well. I wasn't much of a math guy in college, Bear, but that that didn't make a lot of sense to me. I can tell you that much. But as somebody who was rooting for the Raiders to cover, and as somebody who had the Rams in a in a uh, in a survivor contest on with Splash Sports. I will say that um, I almost felt like I was the one that sent in the field goal unit on Sunday <laughs> afternoon. That's how delighted I was to see that team trotting out onto the field. Rams win twenty to fifteen. Good good result for me. Can we can, can we actually play the 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 Ra- the Raiders here, Will? Uh, remember, this is the last time the Chiefs lost the game. It yep. was to the Raiders on Christmas, which is uh, is it, kind of hard to believe. And that was like the all time low. Like, man, this team just doesn't have it this year. And then they go on this incredible run. And remember the whole thing during the summer. Well, what was it, Jeff? Where uh, the Raiders at, at training camp had a Kermit the Frog yeah, ball, and they were Mahomes. mocking Mahomes. Yes. Yes. That stuff. I, I would want no part of the Raiders just for that reason. <laughs> if the Chiefs have a chance to tack one on late, I think they will. They're a little. I don't know. <laughs> They they take this stuff personally. They're they're very competitive. If you if you watch Mahomes, you know on some of these uh, Netflix shows or whatever, he he keeps this stuff in mind. All the great players do. So if the Chiefs have a chance to run the score up, I think they will. So for me, it'd be Chiefs or nothing for that reason. That's great, by the way. I, I love it. Great team, great player. Take a personal chip on shoulder. It, it's it's amazing they win, right? It's, <laughs> but the thing about it is, it's like when, when, as long as the season is right, it's eighteen weeks. It's really. Yeah, 18 weeks now, 17 games, right? You need to find ways to motivate yourself each week. I know it sounds kind of odd to not be motivated for a game, but it's a long it's a long season. And, you know, to the traditional ways sometimes don't motivate you. So you have to find ways. And sometimes it's the Raiders making fun of you in training camp is your motivation to play well this week. Even though they're a division rival and, and they're a hated division rival, I would look to the under. It's 41 and a half. The Raiders aren't going to score, no. right? They're not going to score. And I think the Chiefs, yeah, they might punch one in late to cover the game, but 27-10, you know, like it, it's they're they're not gonna score a lot of points in this game. And we talk about this a lot. Like, when do they care? When do they not care? They care to beat the Niners, they care to beat the Raiders, but they don't really care what the final score is gonna be. Uh so I go under here. Um, if if um Hopkins does play for Kansas City, which I don't think he's even there yet. I don't know if it's the trades official quite yet. Maybe they get him involved in the game plan. So maybe there's a receptions number you look at. Cause one thing the chiefs do better than maybe anyone else 
is they will find ways to get guys the ball they want to get the ball. And I think in week one, if if he's there in time um, and they feel comfortable with him starting and playing, they're going to find ways to get him the ball. Uh, and I'm not saying take, it's a six and a half, take the over, but if it's something like in the four to five range, I will look maybe to the over for Hopkins receptions. So, so John, you mentioned that little, little survivor pool. Uh, you got Lions, biggest favorite of the week against the Titans, who were terrible, who we went against last week when we had Buffalo. You've got the Chargers against the Spencer Rattler and, and, the, and the Saints. We assume it's, it's still going to be Rattler. And then you got the Chiefs against the, uh, the, the Raiders there. I, I know I have all three of those teams available to me. I, I would never, ever, 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 ever take the Chargers in Survivor. That, that's like a, you deserve to lose if you do that. I uh, shouldn't say lose. Whatever happens you, to you, you deserve because the Chargers. But I'm struggling here with uh, burning Detroit. I, I got to look further down the line. I haven't done that yet. Like Detroit's not going to lose to Tennessee. But like there, there's a small part of me that doesn't fully trust Denver uh, at home against Carolina. I, I, what, what are you thinking about Survivor this week? Well, you know, I uh, in, in the big survivor in, in Las Vegas, I used the Chargers last season in a very similar spot. If you guys remember this game, it was a Sunday night game. It was the Bears mm-hmm. at the Chargers. Justin Fields was hurt, so they went with that kid. I think his first name was Tyler Vagent. Tyson Vagent. Yeah. Either way, he couldn't play. And, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of this spot here on Sunday against New Orleans. Are, I mean, are the Saints actually going to trot out Spencer Rattler again? If they do, I think you've got to give uh, some serious consideration to the Chargers. I kind of want to, I kind of want to use the Lions because I believe that the top two picks are going to be Denver, which you mentioned, Bear, and the Chargers. I think people are saving Kansas City, and I think people are going to want to save Detroit. Obviously, they play on Thanksgiving, and I, and I know people are going to want to save Baltimore. They're a big favorite. So I, I, I kind of think that I want to go Detroit and then box ourselves in to use either Dallas or Green Bay on Thanksgiving be, and, uh, and hope that Denver or the Chargers lose in the afternoon because I don't really want to t- take the most picked team. So right. that's kind of where I'm at right now um, between either the Chargers or the Bills or the Bills, the Chargers or the Lions. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the Lions right now on the, uh, the, the data grid. Week 11, it looks like the Lions host Jacksonville, and that would be the pick because if you don't, if you don't have the Lions available, available to you week 11, you're looking at either Miami with maybe Tua hosting the Raiders, the Saints host the Browns, and who knows if Derek Carr is back by them, or the 49ers host in Seattle. And you have Minnesota at Tennessee as well, but like, the, the, the Lions would absolutely be the pick that week if you, A, don't use them this week and you able, are able to get to week 11. So there's your uh, survivor updates brought to you by uh, the, the Baron Murray, two people who are actually still alive in a survivor pool. So hope that information is helpful to someone. Falcons Bucks. No one, uh, no one cares about it, Bear. No, nobody wants to hear about in, our, our survivor stuff. Uh, well, no, that's something. See, you, you can do you can spin it to maybe like, Hey, we're trying to help you go through the thought process as yeah. well. And maybe some things that you haven't thought about as well, but yeah, it's a yeah, two things that typically nobody cares about your fantasy team or your survivor pick. It, it's usually a, uh, my, my Twitter following is not as, is not as large as yours, obviously, but my, the people on Twitter have let me know that they don't care how I do it. Survive. I, I care. I care. I care though. We, I care. We care, yeah. John. I care very, about my friends. That's the most important. I, thing I get very do. emotional when they, when they come at me on Twitter guys, it really hurts my feelings. So. I know I, I, I took something. So I was so upset the other day that, uh, <laughs> I mean, there, there was a, a fine gentleman who, who, who said, Hey, Hey, Chris, a blankety blank blank. And I'm oh, like, wow. <laughs> I'm like, you're, you're, a, you seem like a nice fella. And I mean, it, it just ruined yeah. my week. I, I mean, I don't know how I, how I was able to function uh, throughout the week. So it's mouthy on his burner. He, he does. does. He does. It's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem that we have to figure out. Well, Sam, Sammy's a little mouthy and a little upset just because of uh, FCS games with 41 first half points and they still stay under 58. And then the fact that the bartender now all of a sudden oh, is the, hottest the, guy. The, the sharpest yes. handicapper in the country. Yes. See, he he's 12. I think it's what 12 and eight now. Something like that. So. Yeah. 12 and eight. Wow. 
It's making us look bad. Do you guys, what do you guys think about this? When I, when I go up to these finance meetings and have to explain the house results, what if I say, listen, guys, the bartender's on fire. (laughs) (laughs) What what is it exactly you guys want me to do? What what do you expect me to do when the bartender is winning? The book is not going to do so well in the NFL. I think that's pretty much a fact. I think you should you should let that you should record yourself doing that and let us know how it goes. Just post it for the. Oh, I'm sure that will go over um, very well. Yeah, the, that's a good advice. The the good, one good thing career advice. The, the one thing that that I want to bring about this game, we haven't had a chance to talk about this, is the criticism of Todd Bowles for pull it for not pulling Chris Godwin who got hurt in this game. Um, it's ludicrous to have that take, in my opinion. A couple of things. One is that. This is the NFL. They, they they had five wide receivers dressed according to the bo- the, the the box score. Okay, one of those was Sterling Shepard who barely played. It was like their fifth wide receiver. So Mike Evans gets hurt. So now you're down to four wideouts. You're in a two minute drill. You're down ten. You still have a chance to win the game if you score a touchdown or you kick a field goal onside kick. Yeah, are, are you going to win the game? Probably not. But you're still trying to win the game, and you don't have nine wide receivers up. It's not college football. You have to play your – if Baker's still in the game, which no one disagreed with, you know, having Baker in the game, you're going to keep Godwin in the game. And, yeah, it's a really crummy injury. I've dislocated my ankle. I, I know what it feels like. It stinks. It's not fun. It's But it's freak – my injury was a freak injury. His injuries, his injuries are a freak injury. It's not Todd Bowles' fault. His team was still trying to win the game. If you're down 17 points or down 21 points, yeah, just run the ball and go home. Um, but other than that, like he's doing his job. He's trying to continue to win the football game. You cannot coach scared of injuries. So I want to defend Todd Todd Bowles on that. Also pretty upset guys. I had Baker Mayfield under 12 and a half rushing yards in that game. (laughs) And, uh, the final play of the game down 10 Baker rushes for 12 yards, John Murray and goes over his rushing prop. Uh, He had 12 entering that final snap and he had 24 yards rushing, um, or maybe a 22 yards rushing. That, that was pretty painful. That, that hurt a lot. I, I, you know, I think by that time I'd shifted all my focus over to the Charger game. I didn't even notice that. That's that <laughs> not fun. That's as far as this game, are, I mean, Tampa Bay has no Mike Evans and no Godwin. Are we sure they can't move the ball in Atlanta though? Still, I, I just I have such little faith in Atlanta, and for anything ever, um, I'm I'm not sure I wouldn't back the Bucks in the spot. Will Atlanta as a road favorite? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Correct. Right? Kirk, yes. Kirk Cousins laying road, laying points on the road. Uh, I'm with you, and it's weird. These teams played what two weeks ago, three weeks ago on Thursday Night Football. It it's like a, a weird game. Yeah. Thirty six thirty game. It was a shootout. I would expect kind of more of the same. I know Tampa's beat up at receiver, but Tampa to me is an over team because you can throw it on them, they can throw it on you. Uh, Baker's going to make plays kind of for both teams. He, he's just a you know a, a gunslinger. So to me, I'd still look at the over forty six. I want no part of Atlanta. Uh, you know, maybe throw Tampa in a tease, get them up to eight and a half. But I don't know, Bear. I, it'd be over or nothing for me. I I don't trust Atlanta still on the road. I don't either. Points here. Yeah, I, I don't either at all. I think I think with the with Irving in the backs of the, that the Bucks have, I still certainly think that they can uh, move the ball and put up some points. So I'm in agreement there with, with you, with you, Jeff. So if we didn't get enough of the Giants last week uh, on, oh. on prime time, oh, we, we get the Giants on Monday night. Oh. At, at, at the, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna call it the big ketchup bottle, even though it's now Acroshore Stadium. It'll always be the, it'll always be the big ketchup it'll bottle. Heinz Field. Have you, have you been to a game there ever? Yes. Yeah. On, on third down, the the, the Heinz bottles would like would yeah. come down. Mm-hmm. Like on the screen, they'd pour ketchup everywhere, and the fans would cheer like for third down. Yep, my my, yeah. my wife very upset that it's no longer the big ketchup bottle as well. Yeah, she 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 enjoyed the. Uh, it's a fun place to play. She she enjoyed the Sunday night game with with my Jets being an, an absolute debacle on uh, on Sunday. But are, are 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 we really to the point where we we can't lay six and a half with dangerous on Monday night? Can we, John? I don't look. You can't even ask me because I've been wrong. I've been wrong about the Steelers like every week, you know, guys. Like I, I really like the Jets on Sunday night. I thought it was a great spot for them, and I keep doubting Pittsburgh. And what what did they reel off on Sunday night? Thirty five yeah. points to win yeah. that game. Yeah. Um, they obviously the offense has improved under Arthur Smith. I, I think we can all agree on that. I don't like Russell Wilson. I thought Mike Tomlin was crazy to put him in. Certainly looked like the right move on Sunday as they as they crushed the Jets and crushed me and one of my picks. So I don't know. I mean, I, I, I feel like I keep doubting Pittsburgh, and yet here we are. If they had just stopped that Sunday night drive by the Cowboys a few weeks ago, they'd be six and one. Yep. 
and Crazy. with a good chance to be seven and one going into their bye. Now I know they've played an easy schedule well, but they keep winning all these games. They have all their division games at the end of the season. So they've got this inflated record, but they keep winning. And I don't really want to bet on the Giants. I, I think they're a mess. So I guess I guess yes, we could bet Pittsburgh minus six and a half there. I don't know. Yeah, Jones has typically been better on the road, especially as an underdog. He's been bad covering at home. That that being said, I, I want no part of the Giants here. It'd be Pittsburgh or nothing. Look, I I have him as an under. I thought this is going to be the year. They finally aren't going to be 500. I just have to uh, you know kind of put my sword down and admit I was wrong. And this is a pretty good team. Wilson looked mm-hmm. infinitely better than I, I would have imagined. Now he got a little bit lucky. There was a a ball where Pickens kind of bailed him out with a you know a tip ball where he made an incredible catch. But Wilson looked good. Um, you know they have a good defense. They're uh, you know just a, a solid defense, a solid organization. I, I'd be Pittsburgh or nothing for me. Maybe uh, you know we can throw them into some of those money line parlays, and I, I know that would make life exciting for John if. Uh, <laughs> Monday night, those money line parlays are open heading into this game. I love it. I love I love when all the par- all the favorites win, and then we get to and then you get to the end of the week, and you need like the Giants to win to save your week on the road. That sounds great. That's exactly the exactly the that makes me that that night sounds like I'll be watching Game Three of the World Series that night, Jeff. If that's what we if that's what we end up needing is the Giants outright, then I'll be watching baseball. Uh, I would take Giants team total under fourteen and a half. Um, they haven't scored any points in the last couple of weeks. And I'm looking up the number right now to make sure I have this right. The Eagles had eight sacks, eight sacks on Sunday against the Giants. No Andrew Thomas. Uh, what are the, what's the Saints defense going to do to the Giants? I think the Giants aren't going to score in this game. Um, maybe the Pittsburgh doesn't either. Look, that, that Pittsburgh Jets game was a little misleading in the final score. Like, if Gary Wilson catches that pass, it's a different game, right? They move the ball down the field a little bit more. You're feeling good about the Jets. Instead, the ball clinks off his chest. Pittsburgh intercepts the ball. They take it back to the one. Now Pittsburgh's up eight. The game feels different with one play. Of course, that's the way sports work sometimes, right? Um, but the that's Giants— baseball, the, Susan. The, the Giants just aren't going to score. They, they scored three points last week, seven points against a bad Bengals defense a couple weeks ago, and they're hurt. They're, they didn't run the ball. They didn't even try to run the ball against Philly. So I think Giants team total under would be the way to play this game. Just, just think if they're having trouble running the ball. Wow, if they only had a running back like Saquon Barkley. I don't okay so I don't think the Giants should have spent money on Saquon Barkley because they're not good and spending money on a running back when you're not good is a and waste of money and they spent it on a what a guard uh, uh, I know I'm talking an offensive lineman here so you probably took that no, I didn't take offense to that the, the point of what I'm saying is when you're a bad football team spending money on a running back is a pointless endeavor you might as well try to spend money in other positions to make your entire roster better. It might not work there, which it seems to not work in New York. No. But the, the general idea of that, like if you're if you're the Ravens and your one missing piece is Derrick Henry, yes, go spend the money. If you're the Niners and you need McCaffrey as your one piece left on offense, yeah, go do that. If you're the, the Eagles and you have a good offensive line, you have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Jalen Hurts, okay, go get Saquon Barkley. But keeping Saquon there would – to me is a waste of money when the rest of your roster stinks. <laughs> it's like the White Sox going to sign a closer. I agree with Jeff. All right. Well, we look forward next week to everybody getting together and reconvening and just hearing about John's story from the Tuesday and Wednesday okay. meetings next week about how he had to go upstairs and tell everybody out that we, we, we needed the Giants. I mean, what, what, what can we do? So hope this week goes better for you, John, and hopefully you won't need the Giants and maybe you'll have a little bit more enjoyable week. Go Reds. I think we'll be fine, Bear. I, I think I'll be okay. Go. I don't I know I know everyone always is worried about me. And we are we are sympathizing with me. And, and I, I know people lose sleep worrying about it, but try not to. I'll be fine. Are we are we get are we getting three points at the Emirates on Sunday? I I saw the list of injuries that Arsenal has. It's pretty extensive. And then the red card is I, I don't know about that. I think I'd take the draw, but you know, Liverpool. Liverpool has been so good defensively. Yeah, they've been great. I think we got a chance. Kenneth Kanade has been awesome so far, and having Kelleher is is a godsend. And don't get me going on them spending money on another keeper. They, yeah, you've got your number one when when Allison moves on, but that's that, that's time for another podcast. Will, don't to, fall asleep, Will. Yeah, yeah, I, exactly. I know it's tough. I'm 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 do, I'm kind of like Arsenal Liverpool. Arsenal Liverpool to fall asleep. Will it's better than Jeff, any any better than that, man. Arsenal <laughs> Liverpool. Arsenal Liverpool is the best game on Sunday uh, by far. Correct. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. On that on that note, go Reds up the Red Men. See you guys.
Back from game of group chat, Bear, I was I want to know what, what chair John Murray sits in, like in his office, because he talks a lot about just being comfortable in there. I hope it's a comfortable it's like, it's chair. Like the, it's like the Iron Throne from Game of Thrones. Yeah, that looks uncomfortable, though. No, the Iron Throne looks pretty uncomfortable. Like to sit and watch it football. Very, it looks very uncomfortable. Yeah, did, yeah, does John I, have like one of those gaming gaming chairs with like the, the head go, oh, go yeah. back? I have to I, ask him. Yeah. I've, I haven't been in his office in a while. Spoiler alert. I never understood why the dragon burned the tra- burn, burn the, uh, the Iron Throne down at the end. It made no sense. It just made no sense. A lot of, a lot of questions there at the end. No question, Bear, for my fate of the week. I'm fading the Carolina Panthers offense. They head to Denver this weekend under 16 and a half points uh, as they go to Denver. They went back to Bryce Young, I, I guess, sure. Uh, can't be any worse than Andy Dalton, but they can't score. Um, and Bryce Young doesn't fit for this offense. We saw this early in the season. And going back to it is better than, I guess, Andy Dalton. Plus, Andy Dalton got in a car accident this week. I think he's fine, but I get why they went, 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 went back to Bryce Young, guys. But Denver's defense is really good. Third in DVOA and in points scored, Bear. They just sort of played the a Panthers-esque offense with Spencer Rattler in New Orleans, right? Like that sort of concept of like young quarterback not very good and they shut him down and now the Panthers are on the road back-to-back weeks I'm not sure Bryce Young gives him a, a bump back on offense so I think Denver's defense right now is playing good football and they sort of rely on their defense except their offense and Sertan should be back this week off an injury too so. yeah he should, he should so so you would suggest maybe to me strongly considering using the uh the Denver Broncos in Survivor Oh boy, I'm bad at Survivor Bear. I I do some things good, like I like I bet on like the Pac-12 conference RIP really well. It's over now. Um, I I don't do good in Survivor. I lost both week one and week two in my buyback in. So I, I would say stay away. I, I'm I'm not good at it. The Panthers have to just play Bryce the rest of the year. Right? Yes, there's no point in paying Dolly. Like they had the thing about the Panthers was so shocking. I I mean, I like pieces on their roster. They I think they did a good job in free agency. They're just really, really bad at quarterback. Mm-hmm. And what, what's shocking is, like, they had that first game bump with Dalton. Remember, they went to Vegas and beat Vegas. And since then, it's just gotten worse. I didn't think it'd get this bad, right? They scored 24 against the Bengals in a 10-point loss. They lost by 26 points to the Bears. They lost by two, by 18 to the Falcons. And they lost 40-7. to seven. The, the, the commander's defense is not good. And so, back on the road again, in Denver, high altitude, I, yeah, you might as well just play Bryce Young and see what you have. He won't be your quarterback next year, but maybe he's good for the last four weeks in the end of the season. You feel good about it. So um, I'm uh, I'm on the, the Panthers team total under here. What is your uh, your best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook? My best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook this week. And I know that we talked a little bit about DK Metcalf maybe not being out and maybe the weather, but uh, I think Seattle team total over 20 and a half against the Bills. Uh, I think that Bills defense can still be had. I think you can... You, you can run on them a little bit. I think I think Seattle, uh, with those weapons on offense, should be able to put at least <laughs> 21 points on the board uh, in, in what I think could potentially be a little bit higher scoring game. May, maybe maybe Buffalo, maybe Will, Will's number, maybe before, Will, 23-20. And may, maybe 24-21 could be the type of deal where uh, maybe the Seahawks don't win. But I, I, think, I think their offense should be able to get some points here. They still got some good receivers outside of uh, DK Metcalf, even if DK doesn't play. Again, Bill's, Bill's defense has given up uh, plays most of the year. Even Tennessee last week had a, got off to a good start. So uh, give me Seattle over 20 and a half team total as my best bet on an NFL card that I absolutely hate this week. I, I, I couldn't find anything. Not, not, not a great card. Um <clears throat> The leader in passing yards in the National Football League. Geno Smith. Geno Smith. He's the favorite to lead the, uh, yeah. the NFL in passing yards. Yeah, Geno Smith. Um, obviously, DK's injury, we'll have to keep an eye on, on that as we uh, as we move forward here. But even with that, they have they have you know JSN and they have uh, Lockett. They have weapons. Noah Fan had a good big week last weekend um, as well. Um, all right, Bear. We talked about this earlier. I'm going Browns plus nine for my best bet presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. They're, uh, they're hosting Baltimore this weekend. Um Deshaun, I'm going to read you some some numbers on on Deshaun Watson. Just this is before last weekend, but he didn't play much last weekend. Um, this is from a Ringer article. You ready? Mm-hmm. He's worse than Jamarcus Russell. He's his season. This season is worse than any of Jamarcus Russell's years. You ready? He has the worst success rate on drop back passes since since since, since 2000. Not not great. 
Uh, worst EPA per dropback since 2000. This is Deshaun Watson's season so far. QBR, terrible. I mean, I can keep on and on, right? Like just- But he gives him the best chance to win. Best chance to win. (laughs) So Jameis Winston comes in, right, last weekend. Now he's the emergency guy because Jordan Thompson Robinson was up. He comes in and immediately leads him to a touchdown drive. Immediately, Bear. So the the reason- Garbage time. The game was still, they were still in the game, weren't they? The game, they were still, right? Was it it that much garbage time? No. The offense just, I'll just say this. Whether it was garbage time or not, the offense looked much different with Jameis Winston in the game. And I think the Browns' problem is was was the Sean Watson, right? And we've talked about this before. When you have an offense that can't get first downs, remember the Browns did not convert for 26 straight third downs, Bear, <laughs> which is almost impossible to say. Your defense is going to struggle. You're on the field too much, and defense needs support from the offense more than offense needs support from a defense. Like, like our job is on offense, Bear, is to score points. We can just keep scoring and scoring and scoring and scoring. Like we can, in theory, we can do that. Defense needs a little bit of help from the offense. They need a little bit of rest. They need to feel like the offense can score points as well. They have to, and I think with Jameis Winston in the lineup, there's going to be a more confident Browns team, Bear. And they're going to feel the entire week of practice like they can win. You know how important that is? I played on bad football teams before where during the week, now we practice our butts off. We prepared to win, Bear. But in the back of our mind, we knew like we weren't <laughs> going to win, right? Like I played with, I won't name the quarterback in Carolina. We were 2-14. and 14. We have a 12 points a game on offense for that season. You know it going into that game, is, and, and you're going to play hard, you're going to try your best to win, but you're not going to win. This week in practice, the Browns are going to feel like they can win because they have Jameis Winston. The Ravens are really good. We, we, we know that, right? They're, they're the best team in the NFL right now. They're playing great bear. They're, they're on a short week, division opponent, back on the road. Nine points feels like way too many. For a, a Baltimore pass defense, I think can be had. And I think James can, can can do enough to take advantage of that. So give me Browns plus nine here. You you you, you sold me, right? I'm, I'm not. See, I, I think the numbers. Sold, I think numbers way too high. You sold me, and you've also sold me on the uh, the over three and a half wins as well. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm I'm, I'm two in on the Browns. Go going going down that schedule. Yeah, I, I think they can absolutely win. I think it's about confidence too. Like they're going to feel so much different. Oh, the the the, the 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 yeah, the breath of fresh air. Yes. Like <sighs> now, the one thing that does worry me. <clears throat> Is that Kevin Stefanski gave it play calling duties? I don't know why. Um, like you finally got the quarterback that's not Jameis Winston. Now you right. give it play call duties, <laughs> but uh, that's Deshaun Watson. I keep calling Jameis Deshaun Watson. <laughs> I don't know why. I, uh, so um, you know we we get a, you know typically when you have a backup quarterback, you get a, a little bit of a bump that week when he has whole week to prepare. Watson so, Winston. Uh, folks. Yeah, but one is they're very different people though. So nonetheless, Browns plus nine, best bet. There we go. I like it. I'm going to fire on a little Browns over three and a half when I when we get done here as well. So, And we are done here. Appreciate everybody again for, for watching on the YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe there. Follow us on Spotify, Apple, wherever you eat your podcasts. For Jeff, for Will, for John, I'm Bear. Remember, bless you bet. More you lose when you win. <laughs>